This instructional video covers the various Australian standards and Energy Safe Victoria gas information sheets you may need to consider when undertaking a commercial kitchen installation. It is intended to provide general information and guidance about the applicable Australian standards you will need to be familiar with when installing commercial kitchen appliances. It is not intended to provide comprehensive instructions on how to complete an installation. The applicable Australian standard is ASNZS 5601.1-2022. The video will cover the most important aspects of a commercial kitchen installation from the perspective of this standard. It will also consider installation issues that are most commonly the subject of non-compliance when an installation is inspected by Energy Safe Victoria. The relevant clauses covering each stage of a kitchen installation are also featured. Standard gas installations require you to lodge a compliance certificate with the Victorian Building Authority. Complex gas installations require you to seek acceptance from Energy Safe Victoria prior to commissioning. You must also submit a signed Schedule 11 when you complete the work. Whether it's LPG or natural gas, Energy Safe Victoria's acceptance of a completed installation is required before you can connect the gas supply. Energy Safe Victoria's Gas Information Sheet 33 will help you identify if the installation is a standard or a complex one. First, consider if the kitchen's ventilation is adequate. The amount of ventilation required depends on the type and number of gas appliances to be installed. This requirement is covered by Clause 6.4. It discusses the adequacy and quality of the air supply and measures needed to ensure an adequate supply of fresh air is available to the kitchen's gas appliances. Inside the kitchen, various standards apply to the installation and connection of the appliances. Clause 5.2.9.2 now requires the installation of either a quarter-turn isolation valve or emergency stop button and solenoid with pressure proving where more than one commercial catering appliance is to be connected in the kitchen. Signage clearly identifying the isolation point will also be required. An isolation valve must connect gas appliances in a commercial kitchen. This requirement is covered by clauses 6.6.3 and 6.6.4, which discuss the means and type of isolation to use. It will normally comprise a manual shutoff valve. This valve must be accessible at all times. Clause 1.3.1 defines what accessible means. Combustible walls around your gas appliances must be protected with an approved type of facing board. Clause 6.2.5 describes the temperature nearby combustible surfaces are allowed to reach. Appendix C defines the approved types of fire-resistant or non-combustible material, various methods available to protect combustible surfaces, and the specifications a fire-resistant material must meet. For appliances installed on a combustible surface, such as timber floors, refer to clause 6.10.2.4. Other aspects of the installation you must consider. The clearance between the gas appliances and the wall behind them is important for two main reasons. First, if the installation is against an unprotected combustible wall, the clearance must meet the manufacturer's installation instructions as per clause 6.2.2. Secondly, clearance is required to avoid crushing any gas components located behind the appliance. A bumper the same size or greater than the required clearance must be installed to maintain the clearance at all times. This is required regardless of whether the appliance is on wheels or casters and designed to be moved or if it is on legs. The minimum clearance between a gas appliance and the extraction system's grease filter is specified in clause 6.10.2.2. This can range from 200 mm for a kebab cooker to 1350 mm for a target top Chinese cooking table, griddle, barbecue, char griller broiler or open top flare griller broiler. The minimum distance between different gas appliances and the grease filter vary depending on the type of gas appliance being installed. Refer to clause 6.10.2.2 if you are unsure of the minimum clearance for each appliance. It is also important to double check the installation instructions. What's happening behind the appliance before it's installed? There is a standard for every aspect of the plumbing fixtures fitted to support the appliance's installation. Appliance isolation is governed by clause 6.6.3 and must be accessible and able to be isolated. 
If a hose assembly is used to connect a gas appliance, the isolation must be located in accordance with Clause 5.9.6. The hose assembly must be installed, forming a U-shape, and be free from any kinks or permanent deformation in accordance with Clause 6.10.2.7. In commercial kitchen installations, semi-rigid connectors can only be used in accordance with Clause 6.10.2.8. In accordance with Clause 5.9.1, the hose must be one continuous length and the clearance between the hose assembly's bottom loop and the floor must be at least 50 millimetres. An appliance regulator must be fitted to each appliance as per Clause 6.6.5. It must be installed as close as practicable to the appliance and be accessible for servicing and adjustment. In accordance with Clause 6.2.14, a restraint must be fitted if an appliance is connected by a hose assembly and it is more than 20 kilograms and fitted with casters, rollers or wheels or can be slid out for servicing. The restraint, which is attached to the wall, must be shorter than the hose assembly and strong enough to not break when the appliance is moved. A bumper must be fitted to ensure the minimum clearance between the appliance and the wall behind it is maintained at all times, and to ensure the hose assembly is not damaged when the appliance is moved back into position against the wall. This is a requirement regardless of whether the appliance is on wheels or casters and designed to be moved, or whether it is on legs. Fittings installed on appliances designed to be moved for cleaning must meet various standards. In accordance with Clause 6.2.13, a hose assembly must be used to connect an appliance fitted with casters, rollers or wheels. In accordance with Clause 6.10.2.6, freestanding commercial catering equipment with a connection point under the equipment must not use a hose assembly to connect to that point. A gas appliance designed to be moved can only be connected to the consumer piping using a hose assembly as per clauses 5.3.7, and 6.2.14. The clearance between the bottom loop and the floor must be at least 50 millimetres. If an appliance weighs more than 20 kilograms, an appliance restraint must be fitted. It must be shorter than the hose assembly and strong enough to not break when the appliance is moved, as required by Clause 6.2.14. Note the position of the valve and other components behind the appliance. If the appliance can be moved, this installation will be considered to be compliant. A bumper must be fitted between the appliance and the wall behind it to ensure the minimum clearance is maintained and to make sure that components behind the assembly are not bumped, kinked or damaged in any way when the appliance is moved back against the wall. In accordance with clauses 6.2.2, 6.2.5 and 6.10.2.3, there must be clearances on either side of the appliance and between the appliance and any benches or other appliances installed beside it. Refer to the manufacturer's installation instructions. Clearances must either meet the manufacturer's installation instructions be sufficient to avoid nearby surfaces getting hotter than 65 degrees Celsius or comply with the specifications of Clause 6.10.2.3 for minimum clearances around cooking surface areas. Avoiding the use of combustible materials in benches is a key requirement in a commercial kitchen installation. Non-combustible bench materials enable an efficient use of space as zero clearances to appliances are often allowable, depending on the appliance manufacturer's requirements and they do not present a fire risk. Ensuring each stage of a job complies with the relevant Australian standard is the most cost-effective approach to a commercial kitchen installation and the safest. Rework to meet the standard's compliance requirements will cost you time and money and you may incur a fine from Energy Safe Victoria if your work fails more than one inspection. Even greater cost may be to your business when loss of reputation is considered. By following these guidelines and improving your knowledge of the applicable Australian standards, your installation is more likely to be deemed compliant on first inspection.